You have the idea, you know, some idea you want to just bounce off of somebody to see what they think. This is the place to do it. It's a think tank, you know, for barbecue. Hey folks, Ben from Smoking Hot Confessions here. I want to kick this interview off by giving mad props to Joey from b, b Charcoal. We just recorded like 25 minutes of just beautiful interview, only to find out that the phone had been hit with an Amber Alert 21 seconds into the recording and it shut the phone down. Ah, and he's, it's all good. It's he's all good. very, it's very graciously letting me uh, do all this again. So mate, thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, and how have you been enjoying the MBBQA conference? Now we, we love the MBBQA conference. This is, uh, this is my fourth year I believe um, this year you know we we, we attend um, we're a sponsor we're uh, you know I'm a board member and uh, and this is just one of those things when I first came on board with BNB charcoal this was the very first event that we ever did mm. and uh, and I really really believe that this is a big key to the success that we've had because of the relationships we've been able to build through this and um, and again like I said th this this whole organization is really built on friendships and, you know, being able to network within this industry. And it doesn't matter if you're if, if you're a novice, if you are have a catering truck, if you've got a uh, a brick and mortar barbecue place, you're making seasonings or sauces or whatever. Uh, this industry, you know, they all need the input from everyone. And uh, if you're starting off, especially, this is the place to be. They can save you so much money, so much time because everyone who's a member here has been where you were at one point and they can really help you in your decision making or you know it being able to give you some options that maybe you don't even know about one of the things that i noticed just walking around and just sort of people watching is that if someone doesn't know the answer to your question right. they know who does correct and they will grab you and take you to that person correct. and correct. explain the situation and solve exactly and uh, you know and that's what it's all about you know and even today like you know, we're having, we have an opportunity to, uh, to, you know, to speak to members, but we also have an opportunity to, uh, to showcase our wares, whatever we do. Uh, and then we also have, because they have this SCA deal tonight, uh, which would be the steak cook-off tonight, uh, you know, we have an opportunity to, to share. I'm from Texas. We're in Kansas. You know, we've got guys who, uh, you know, have traveled in from, you know, other states. We do have a few guys from Texas here, but we've got here guys from Memphis, and we've got guys from Washington State, and we've got guys from, you know, all over. And uh, traditionally, when we go do SCAs, uh, we're doing it very regional to us, uh, as well as them. So tonight, it could be anybody's game, uh, but it also gives us an opportunity to take a look and see what they're doing over there. And, um, and believe it or not, everyone's really, really, they're, they're so willing to give you information. It's, it's unreal, you know. But again, like I said, this is a, uh, this is a knowledge, I mean, what do you, what do you call it? I mean, it, it's a knowledge pool. And uh, you, you have the opportunity to come and get ex the exact pinpoint piece of information that you want. You have the idea, you know, some idea you want to just bounce off of somebody to see what they think. This is the place to do it. It's a think tank you know, for barbecue. And uh, and again, like I said, these guys are, are so, so willing to share their successes, their failures, their, you know, uh, man, I wish I would have done it differently. You know, in today's day and age, because of social media is such a big part of it today, you know that extremely well, that, you know, if we don't have this social media aspect to it, uh, it it's, you can't grow. It just, it's just, it's almost impossible. So as we kind of continue on, you know, and we're, we're a couple days into this, I've actually been here for like three days. Uh, you know, we're on the official two day uh, or the second day event of this. And uh, we had the Culinary Fight Club was the very first night. That, that was had. very cool. And uh, that was something new for this event. Now it's very, very, um, you know, they have those up in the Chicago area quite a bit. Um, and, uh, but like I said, it was, it was so cool because we had uh, Jason Bauer, you know, he's from Seattle area, uh, you know, going against some guys who, who do this, you know, once a month, you know, and he was able to come in here and pull it off, you know. But again, like I said, you know, everyone here is very competitive, you know, and uh, whether you're a competitive cook or, you know, competitive in business or, or something, 
um, this is a group of winners. And it's and it's kind of crazy because, like I said, normally when you're in there, everyone really holds everything so close to their chest and doesn't want to share a lot of that information. But here you'll see so many people are proud of their accomplishments and they want to share that information because they want other people to be successful as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a buddy, Dan, from Country Boys in, uh, yep. in Australia. Uh, mm. you, you know Dan? You met Dan? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 Uh, he always says he's very open about what he does and, and how he does it because, as he says, I can show you everything that I do. Right, you still got to cook it. You actually have to go and do it. Correct, correct. And, and I'm 100% with that. You know, it's, it's one of the... Yeah, a, a great example of that is, you know, when I started cooking with 20 years ago, um, the the very first cook-off that I ever went to, you know, I thought it was a drinking contest. I had no <laughs> clue that you were supposed to turn food in, you know. And I was very successful at the drinking side. I was terrible at the cooking side. And it took me a long time to really understand that, you know, you have to decide. Is this a, uh, you know, do you want to be successful in this or do you want to be popular in this? And it's kind of like a high school thing. You know, you want to be the cool kid or you want to be the brainy kid that, you know, that gets all the accolades and awards. And I, it took me a long time to figure out that I wanted to be the brainy kid, you know, and I, I wanted to try to start getting return on investment and, you know, that type of deal and, and quit having parties and start being serious on, on the deal. And honestly, it, it probably took me five years before I figured that out. As I continued on in life and, you know, and I would take every second that I could to go compete and, you know, all this other stuff, um, I have a young son who also competes as well Ty now he's 17 and doing very he very does, he does very really well. well I got him kind of interested and involved at a young age you know he was he was probably right right before he turned about nine years old he started kind of helping me more and it was a cool thing to hang out with dad and and then eventually uh, when he got about you know 10 11 years old uh, we actually got him more involved in cooking and cooking on his own and you know, and it came down to, you know, it was just a, you know, I'll tell you what I do, you replicate it, and uh, then he was able to put his own twists on it, and then he became very successful on his own just cooking IBCA contests, and uh, right after that, he had an experience where he got to go cook uh, on uh, Food Network for Kids Barbecue Championships, oh, wow. and uh, did really well on that show. And then that kind of launched his little little deal, and now he goes on. He only cooks SCAs now, um, and like I said, he's become a, a, a very successful cooker now, even at 17 years old. And again, you know, he had first place uh, wild game at um, at uh, Memphis in May last year. You know, he did uh, you know top one of the top cookers in, in World Foods. You know, this past year at World Food Championships in SCA. Uh, he finished seventh overall out of 200 cooks, you know. Um, so, again, like I said, with, you know, it, this is very much a, a family organization. Whether you're blood or not, um, you know, everyone really, really takes all the time and energy and, you know, and really tries to instill this. Because, again, I've always said that if we skip a generation, this will all be lost. Yeah. And uh, y'all are kind of, as far as Australian market right now or New Zealand or you know, anywhere overseas right now, it's always been a thing, but now it's starting to get a little bit more serious and, and getting, you know, more people are getting interested. I think that honestly, I, I think that y'all are in the infancy of, of the barbecue <laughs> movement, you know, up there, uh, you know, and again, it's, it's kind of like this organization. We've gone through, we've made our mistakes, we've done everything else, and now it's very easy uh, for someone to get online one day and decide that they want to be a competition cook and be able to succeed because all the information is there, you just got to go find it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you come here, you just leave the computer at home and it's real life. You just grab someone, you go, oh, I've always wanted to learn how you do this. I've watched your YouTube video. I've watched, you know, I, I've always been interested in your seasoning or I've been buying your seasoning for years. I don't know how to use it, you know? So this is your opportunity. You get in front of these people, you, you you can get any answer in the world, and uh, or you can get nothing. You know, it's up to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's up to the individual. You can come to a conference and be a wallflower, right? Or you can get in there and and, uh, and and mix it up with the rest of them. Exactly. Exactly. Now, speaking of all things internet, yep, blowing up the socials on, on the B and B pages at the moment uh -huh. is this rig, this monster truck and trailer that you got set up here. Yep, yep. Tell me about the truck. What is that exactly? 
So the truck that I currently drive right now, I've got a, I've got a couple different trucks, but this particular truck right here, this is a Chevrolet Kodiak. It's it's a 4500. So they actually call it a medium duty truck. And really and truly it's 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 a step under a semi. It's really what it is. And um, but this particular truck is uh, super comfortable. It's uh, it's a really really safe vehicle for what I do. You know, we did 100,000 miles last year. Um, and usually we're loaded down pretty good. You know, the trailer that I'm pulling behind this one right now is a 28 foot triple axle trailer. Wow. And um, it, it's just the capability of this is, is incredible. You know, I can, I can, on this particular trip, I brought up three pallets of product. On some events, you know, we'll go, I'll put eight pallets of product in here. Wow. And uh, so again, like I said, we have, we have several different vehicles that we use for several different events. Uh, but this is the one that, that is, this is our rolling billboard. The truck's very functional. Uh, it's just obnoxious enough that people really notice it. Uh, but it's a beautiful combination going down the road. Yeah, I think when you've got trailers this size, you want to be driving the trailer, not have the trailer be driving you. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. In, uh, in most of the conditions that we go to, you know, we're, we're driving downtown New York or downtown Chicago or, you know, downtown Kansas City, uh, you know, that, that's not what this vehicle was built for, but at the end of the day, uh, it is, it's very easy to maneuver, and uh, again, like I said, it's super safe. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, mate, before I let you go, because yep. there, there is a uh, site inspection guy coming around, I did just yeah, see him whip past. Perfect, perfect. What would be your three top tips for people that are designing their trailers? And I'm asking because in Australia at the moment, there's a new trend, people are starting to move towards trailers. So, correct, correct. three top tips for trailers. Sure. I think that right now when you look at trailers, and we've got a variety of different trailers that we have at home, everything from bumper pulls to goosenecks to, you know, fully enclosed trailers to porch trailers, um, you know, you have to find the one that's the right function for you. And, uh, you know, not everyone I, I think is going to have the ability to have 15 trailers at the house, uh, but, you know, you have to find one that's going to work. Um, you know, what is at the end game, you know, are you cooking only SCAs, can you, can you walk in a, a little side cargo door and just bring your pit in, you know, are, are you going to be doing a lot of overnight cooks, do you need to, uh, to try to focus on, you know, sleeping overnight and accommodating, do you have kids, you know, do we have to keep the kids entertained while we're, you know, doing our events, you know, uh, our TV's important, you know, what creature comforts do you need, and then also at the same time, what is your end goal? You know, do we need to be pushing pits and, you know, do, do we have the capability of pushing pits in and out of the trailer? It's, it's funny because now in Texas we have guys who've got jambos and we have all this other stuff and they have a trailer for the trailer. You know, they have a trailer pit that they winch up into the trailer, you know, because again, they, you know, they spend a lot of money on jambos and want to keep them beautiful. But again, it's a trailer and a trailer. Um, you know, is that necessary? I don't know. You know, it, it, it is kind of night Rider cool, though. But it, yeah. it, exactly, you know, and it, it's kind of like the Russian doll thing, you know, you just go, oh, <laughs> hold on. But again, like I said, you know, nowadays, you know, for us, especially in the Texas area where I'm originally from or where, where I'm from now is, uh, you know, you got guys who can go cook a whole contest on three barrels and uh, or you have a guy who's who's putting that jambo in your trailer or, you know, whatever. It's it's your equipment. You know, figure out what's what works for your equipment. Figure out what makes mama happy, if if that's a factor. Um, you know, if she's not happy, no one's happy. But at the other other aspect of it is, you know, look at the vehicle that you have. Make sure the vehicle that you have is capable to pull your dream pit or your dream trailer or your dream whatever. Yep. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, you may be going to a barbecue contest today. You may be moving your mother-in-law next week and um, your neighbors may not appreciate that in your yard either. So uh, again, like I said, it, bigger's not always better. You know, functionality is like key and uh, you know, being able to, to move the vehicle safely from point A to point B is probably one of the most crucial things at all. Beautiful. Well, look, man, thanks so much for your time. Yep. Thanks for being part of the, uh, of the MBBK, of the SCA. And thanks for your contribution to the scene as a whole. Hey, thank you for making the trip down here. We appreciate it.